Okay, good afternoon. Um, I'll start off with an apology. I know you're not meant to, but I'm not going to do anything anywhere near as cool as that, so I've just sort of screen grabbed some code, so apologies for that. Um, I'm going to bring you up to speed with my PhD. I'm currently two years into a part-time PhD at the University of Winchester, and that's going to be looking at, that is looking at how um, the general public engage with cultural heritage and protected landscapes, and sp specifically how you can target hard to reach audiences, so um, younger audiences in this case. That doesn't work. Um, a quick synopsis of the talk, I'm going to be looking at some background as to protected landscapes, I'm going to be looking at um, the problems that some of these um, protected landscapes face, the case study, which is the New Forest National Park, how we engage um, with the public, approaches, um, the approach to this research. Um, I'm going to be focusing on Instagram, uh, quick review of the results, the user interface, um, at how we understand the data and how to move forward. So it's going to be quite quick, there's a lot to look at. Um, protected lens landscapes uh, in this, uh, this project are, are, what I'm looking at in terms of protected landscapes are uh, national parks and areas of outstanding natural beauty. Um, and these have a remit to conserve and enhance the natural beauty, wildlife, cultural heritage. Um, of these areas and promote public understanding and enjoyment for these, these special qualities and these are going to be important aspects of this work and the case study which is the New Forest is this tiny little national park down here on the south coast of England. Um, protected landscapes as a whole have a number of pressures more recently with recessions and other aspects government funding towards these areas have been slashed. Um, as a result, the managing organisations rely heavily on external funding bodies such as high-level stewardship schemes and heritage lottery funds. Um, the New Forest itself is Europe's has hosts boasts Europe's largest high-level stewardship scheme of £20 million. Pounds. A large aspect of that is archaeological recording and public engagement. Um, with Brexit around the corner, we don't know what's going to be replacing that and it's for us to inform that. Um, there's also an aspect of um, sharing these, uh, these qualities, the cultural heritage, engaging people with their local heritage, their archaeology, um, which have a positive and negative spin attached to them. Some of them is looking at how we use volunteers to do jobs that were previously paid for. Um, other aspects um, look at it, in, or other people approach it in a view, such as Heritage Lottery Fund, that if you invest people with their local heritage, their archaeology, um, they will look after it further, they will be more engaged with it and um, they will get more from it. There are a whole series of benefits from that. And whilst all these things are issues and things to be concerned of, time moves forwards as normal and archaeological sites are seeing increasing pressure from natural environment, uh, human in interaction and other aspects. So um, monuments go on the, shed on the monuments at risk of this and other aspects of that. So we have to be considering how to protect these sites. Um, through externally funded project, the New Forest National Park have got a pretty successful ap approach to engaging local people with um, the, the cultural heritage of this protected landscape. Last year alone we had over 1,200 volunteer days. Um, over ten, the last 10 years, thousands of archaeological sites have been recorded through a large-scale LIDAR survey project. Um, we've done all history recording, geophysical surveys, crowdsourced translation of war diaries, everything you can see there. Uh, and more. Um, a considerable amount of money and time has been saved through this approach, um, taking off some of the bits I've previously mentioned, um, and we have engaged local audiences and wider audiences with the importance of the heritage and culture of the New Forest National Park. However, the majority of the people that participate in this work are over 50. Um, and this is a real issue, a recent um, piece of work that we had undertaken as part of an externally funded project again um, highlighted that we really don't engage with younger audiences and as a result of the, th this lack of engagement um, I, my PhD was created in that we wanted to look at ways of identifying how younger people engage with protected landscapes, how people see cultural heritage and if we can understand that, how we can create projects to further engage them or, or perhaps change that behaviour in some way. So what we need to know is what these, this audience are doing, how they view and experience a national park, how they're learning, um, where they're going, what, what they're interested in, um, how we can get this information honestly. I mean, trying to get younger audiences to participate in questionnaires, 
is not impossible. Um, unless you go around every school and talk to them individually, it's very hard to get this this level of information of what what these uh, young this young audience or hard to reach audience are doing and how they see the national park. Um, and then, if we get this information, how can we use it to uh, create a project that would engage them um, in a different way further down the line? Um, it's not a surprise that the UK is now a smart society, a smart smartphone society, and this use of smartphones, social media, web technology, um, is something that really needs to be tapped into, I believe. And um, th there are a number of people that uh, are identifying the power of um, smartphone technologies in the use of in of citizen science projects, volunteer engagements, and other aspects. And it's not a secret either that younger audiences like to sit, sit and stay at their mobile phones. So as I mentioned, I'm currently undertaking a PhD. This has two main aims, um, to ev evaluate the potential of big data, uh, namely social media data, uh, and mobile technologies to enhance heritage management in protected landscapes, um, and implement a project that makes best use of big data and mobile technology as a means to encourage 16 to 24 year olds to engage with heritage in protected landscapes. Um, I'm not going to be talking about all of this today. The main thing that I'm going to be looking at as we go forward is assessing the use of different social medias uh, by a general public in protected landscapes and how this can be used to inform a citizen science project. So the approach that I've taken is looking to harvest Instagram and Twitter data using the hashtag New Forest. And each of these I've look, looked to collect text, associated hashtags, locational information. Um, I've undertaken some image assessments or analysis uh, of the Instagram uh, data, the Instagram data and likes. Uh, this is all in place in a database and then um, I'm looking to analyse it and that's the bit I'm going to be going on to in a minute. Um, but the main aspect I'm going to look at today is the Instagram. Um, most people here will know what Instagram is. It's an image and, or media sharing, social media. Um, but the information provided with Instagram can provide us on, on in, can provide insight uh, on interests, locations of visited sites, um, individuals' views, opinions, um, and how they might use the protected landscapes as well as like patterns. 59% um, of internet users between the ages of 89, 18 and 29 use Instagram, so that's quite a nice demographic. Um, so can we use this hashtag, these hashtags to assess and understand how people are exploring the New Forest National Park? Um, we did, I did attempt this in, in a way of doing this manually, uh, but it took a very long time and was uh, overcomplicated, so we looked to automate this. I'm only going to breeze over this very quickly, but this is the rough stru st structure of the architecture we've created. Um, this is working with Damien Chevariet, um, who built this uh, architecture and did the coding. Um, and it was looking at a concept to see how we can collect this data, analyse the data using things such as TensorFlow to do image recognition, um, as well as um, sentiment analysis, uh, emoticon analysis and sentiment analysis and the more important bit, the analysis of the text and information using J Jupyter Notebook. Um, at, at first glance, we got lots of information uh, over a five-month period, over 50,000 um, Instagram posts, um, 60, over 60,000 um, different hashtags. Um, typically, very little association with archaeology and heritage. Um, that's not a new view. Uh, Keith Chalice has been talking about this for years, I think. But, um, but a lot of information, so trying to get to grips with that is quite difficult. A quick glance at the user interface, I won't dwell on this, but there is a basic user interface, interface that's been created where you can get a first glance view. Um, but this isn't what I've been focusing on. We can also look at producing heat maps based on the locational information that people provide. And there were some archaeological assets associated with that, such as REF Bewley, Stony Cross a number of other sites, but also Stonehenge, so we need to clean that data, I think. Uh, the image recognition aspects proved to work. Um, uh, interestingly, church buildings are actually showing up a lot of historical structures, which is something we'll come back to look at. 
But how can we start to understand these rich data? Um, the approach that I've taken is using the Jupyter Notebook, and much like we've just seen in the previous talk, it's just brilliant. The coding is simple, and we've been able to produce code that allows us to do the micro, so look at individual posts, identify a number of likes and associated hashtags to the larger scale, to total number of um, hashtags um, of each individual hashtags, total number of check-ins at specific locations. Um, we can go further and put associated hashtags with associated attached to locations, which we have here. We can run analysis, analysis on number of images shared on a day across the whole time period. This here is a new forest show, a very large um, festival that takes place in the new forest. So lots of people sharing pictures then. Um, we can start to look at patterns during uh, weekdays. Not surprisingly, people are sharing most of their images on a Sunday after they've gone out for their walk. Um, and it's proven really um, useful. And it, it, this sort of abuts it, it, Isa's um, workshop on Monday in that it's a really nice, powerful tool that if you just sit down and learn a bit, you, you can get some really nice outputs. And I've just scratched the surface on this. I've only just finished collecting my data and therefore, hence, I've only got a few examples to share. There are a number of considerations that um, need to be taken in, into account, namely social media etiquette, how people behave on Instagram. If you start to look at like patterns and other aspects, um, there's a whole series of documentation on how teenagers use Instagram, and perhaps like patterns isn't an accurate representation. Um, a number of younger audiences use, use private accounts, in which case we're not getting that information. Um, not all the information has geolocation, and people have to choose to share that information. Um, there are also adverts. A number of the hashtag New Forest um, tags aren't in the New Forest. Uh, there's a great one today of a tropical island that came up. Um, there are deep learning issues that it says there are a number of megalithic monuments in the New Forest that there aren't, so we need to be tweaking that and looking to understand that and improve that further. Huge ethical questions, um, not least with the stuff that's going on in the news at the moment, but I don't think it goes quite that far. But it is quick, it is cost effective, and it's proven very insightful. Uh, that's been a really whistle top store on the research. I'm sorry it's been so quick and full of information, but um, what next? Um, I need to analyse the data. You've only seen, as I say, I've just touched the, ice, the top of the iceberg. Um, and then once I've got understood it, we'll, we'll create a project. Let's try and do that. I'm also looking to incorporate anonymised mobile phone data to look at how people are moving within a, the national park landscape. But I would ask for help. So if anyone's got any thoughts, concerns, considerations, input, please do share. My background is remote sensing and uh, landscape survey, so this is all pretty new to me, so I very much like any input that you can share. Thank you very much for listening.